right, well, for today, I just want to explore Scripture with you for a little bit. I have no direct Lenten reference for this weekend, but don't worry, we're going to make up for that in the next three weekends. Now, I've said it before, I will say it again, the Bible is an absolutely fascinating collection of literature. Some parts are boring because they have to be. Their records or ancient Jewish law books, that's boring no matter how you cut it. But aside from those parts, these documents are just jam-packed with literary richness that you can literally spend a lifetime learning and appreciating. Our ancestors were not these dumb, backward troglodytes who could barely dress themselves in the morning as we tend to remember them. That is a gross stereotype. We always look to the past with this eye that we're superior to what came before, and it's very simply not true. Our ancestors, our forefathers in faith, were as capable as we are when it comes to grappling with abstract, complex ideas and dealing with the immense challenge of knowing ourselves, the universe, and God as best as possible. And when I say that, I mean, when I'm in a particularly bad mood with respect to society, I'll go as far as to say that those ancient thinkers were more capable than we are in such things. But that is a debate for another time. So if you want a complex subject that has no simple lesson to learn, a story that leaves you wondering about it all day long, pouring over the various details and clues, well, look no farther than our first reading, Genesis chapter 22. This is intense. Abraham and Isaac. Abraham, the dad, is told by God to sacrifice his son Isaac as a sign of his faith. Abraham goes through with it right up until the last moment when an angel intervenes. Isaac is saved, and it's a happy ending. Or so it seems. So I'm not going to analyze it, summarize it, and apply it to daily life. That's, how I, that's my normal strategy. Today... I'm going to go through the simple explanations of this gospel pass of this Bible passage and I'll explain why those simple explanations don't really hold water all that well. And the point of this homily is that the books of the Bible are complicated. They are meant to make us think. They are supposed to challenge us and they do so with complicated situations, unpleasant situations. So, you need to avoid the temptation to accept an easy answer to a complicated matter. Let's give it a try, shall we? So, the first overly simple explanation of Genesis 22, it's a story about how God demands total faith from you, even more so than protecting your own kid. This cannot be true. For starters, it conflicts with thou shalt not kill. Now, it's true that Abraham came before Moses, so uh, the Ten Commandments weren't written down yet. That is a technicality. Death is not something that delights God. Death is a consequence of sin. It is not an expression of faith. Also, in the book of Genesis, it is very clear that God is against human sacrifice. Idols and demons like human sacrifice. So no, it can't be that simple that faith is just more important than, uh, than that. Two, second explanation. This was God was testing Abraham to see if he would obey his moral compass and not kill his own son. Now, that's a very tempting answer. There is some evidence for that. But the Bible also praises Abraham for his faith. He is our forefather in faith. So, like it or not, no matter how angry you are at Abraham, he was rewarded at the end. 
Possibility three. Abraham was just going through the motions because he knew, he knew that God would intervene before the knife dropped. Now that is what happened, to be fair, but Abraham hardly knew that would be the case. The gravity of the situation was not lost upon him. He did not know what would happen to him and Isaac in the end. His faith in God might very well have involved the death of his son. I will take this moment to remind you the story beat of a father giving up his son in sacrifice is not in the Bible once. When we hear that story beat a second time, it's a little different. The story ends differently for Jesus than he does for Isaac. You can't just assume that God will swoop in and work everything out before the bad stuff runs its course. Sometimes God needs you to run through the fire. And four, this is a story that's all about the fact that uh, human life is limited, but faith in God is eternal. You need to let go of your kid because they could die at any time. Don't lose God for the sake of even your child. Death is a part of the world. Don't lose your soul resisting death. Now, while I appreciate that message, it doesn't work here because our own actions done with our own hands always count toward our moral worth. Throughout the entire Bible, God always recognizes the difference between suffering that comes from the world, you know, like cancer, nobody's fault, versus suffering that comes from a human being, like a knife. So that message does not apply to Genesis 22. Now those are the four things I could think of off the top of my head, you know, throughout the week. And I'm skipping all of the worthless opinions that don't deserve a part of the conversation. One of my, uh, one of my fellow seminarians back in, uh, back in school, he said, if it was even remotely allowed, I say we tear this page out of the Bible and be done with it. He hates this reading so much, he says, I personally don't believe it belongs in the Bible. Now, he was trained to be a Catholic priest. He knew better than that. But that's how much he hates this story. I'm ignoring stuff like that. I want you to understand this passage is very difficult. But it matters. It shows how God interacts with us in our difficult choices throughout life. And I am not here to tell you what to think or believe. Contrary to popular opinion, that is not my job as a priest. My job is to present the wisdom of the church and hopefully guide you to be a little closer to Christ. And for this passage, in terms of the wisdom of the church that I have to give to you, I have my favorite bit of information. Um, so I believe, I believe that God wanted Abraham to have faith, which he, which he did, but that he also wanted something more from Abraham as a father. So I guess that puts me closest to theory number two, that God was testing Abraham. Now here's my favorite easy-to-miss bit. This is the wisdom of the church. You're not likely to figure this out on your own until someone just tells you in black and white. Abraham talks to God for most of his life in the book of Genesis. And he's talking to God throughout this whole passage in Genesis 22. And when he's ready to kill Isaac, an angel comes and intervenes. An angel talks to Abraham from then on out, not God. After this passage, God never talks to Abraham ever again. By all means, go home, crack open your Bibles if you don't believe me. Abraham's relationship with God is never the same after this point. So I believe that Abraham was partially pleasing to God, but ultimately he did let God down in the end. And he received the rewards of he got to keep his son, you know, Abraham didn't have to lose Isaac. And he became a father of a great multitude. Remember back then, that was the highest reward you could hope to receive as a man. He won the ancient Jewish lottery in that way. 
So he is showered with rewards on the human level. But he lost a piece of his friendship with God. And that's a deeply sad thing. I've been a priest for nearly 10 years. I still don't really know what this part of the Bible is trying to tell us. All I know, and the wisdom of the church I have to share with you, all I know is that it's a bitter, sweet ending. Good things and bad things resulted from Abraham's actions. Who knows? Maybe that's a metaphor for life in general. But regardless, know that the Bible is a powerful library of documents, and you should not underestimate it just because it's old. Today, before you go to bed, between now and bedtime, I challenge you, think about what this passage means to you and what you might have done if you were in Abraham's place. But no matter what, avoid the temptation to accept an easy answer for a complicated question.